Okay. At Granite Falls Lutheran Church. Welcome if you are tuning in or joining our broadcast electronically over Facebook or the television station or any other form of media, radio, as we join together. You may be not in our parking lot here. You might be at a cabin or your home. But what we would like to do is welcome you as well as brothers and sisters in Christ as we gather here today, and we do so um, for the joyous celebration of the baptism of Madeline Susan Johnson and family gathered here from, from near and far, and we're thankful for that as we gather. I have some announcements I want to bring to you today. Uh, most of them you'll see on the back page of your, of your bulletin, but this is also then for people who might be tuning in. And... Uh, as we uh, do uh, join together today, we have been giving thanks this past week for uh, the work and for the commitment of Soraya Burgesson um, these past 11 months at our church. And she's headed off to school up in Wapaton, North Dakota. And we have, therefore, a part-time office position open. And if you are interested, please contact uh, either pa Pastor Paul or myself and uh, or the office and we will give you more details about the, that particular job description so and if you uh, you might yourself not be uh, 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 interested but if you know someone who's interested please pass the word on we need some volunteers and uh, as we are beginning to resume worship uh, now out here but as we look forward to a time um, when we do it in the church uh, we need ushers, obviously, to hand out bulletins and assist with seating, although you're doing a pretty good job of seating yourself out here. But as we seat in the church, especially, um, and seek to maintain social distancing, we'll want to assist people with that. We also need greeters who, of course, will do that verbally, but also um, will take temperatures and record names and that's uh, two to four ushers and two to four greeters. And please contact the church if you can help, if you can help out. And, and part of that also is if you are an at-risk person, we love you and we love your commitment, but you might want to um, cede that responsibility to someone, okay? Um, the church is looking for a generator, too. We needed one last week. There was no power here. And uh, we need to keep our sump pumps running during power outages. So if you are able to help with this, please let the church office know. And thank you once again from uh, the leadership of the church, um, Pastor Paul and I, for your financial and your moral support during the time that we are struggling with in uh, COVID-19. With your support, it is much less of a struggle. And I don't mean just financial, I also mean uh, your moral support, your prayers, your concerns. Thanks you for doing that as we continue our ministry. One, one quick other announcement. Sorry, I tangled myself even worse than I thought I had. So this is Tim and Theo's last Sunday with us before we all go to Juilliard. So they have been helping out with singing. So if we could just give them a lovely round of applause. And then also we thank Irene, who whose last Sunday was last week. Is that correct? And so thanks to her as well for all of her service during this time. We are truly grateful for it. So thank you both. As you can tell, we're used to wireless mics. Let's join together in worship. And as we do so, we will turn in your bulletin to a song that we're going to use to begin to center ourselves around this baptism of Madeline Susan Johnson. And the song is Born in Cry, and one a change from the way that it's printed. There's two verses there, and then we're going to sing also the third and uh, verse and refrain which is printed on, ver on page 4. So we'll sing those two verses with refrains and then also the one on, on page 4. Um, so 
uh, and then in place we'll have special music after the baptism. Let's sing. baptism. Our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity and in the water uh, and the Holy Spirit we're reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ, living with Christ. And in the communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Madeline and Susan baptized? If so, answer, we do. We do. As you bring Madeline and Susan to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the Word of God, and, and Holy Communion, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Bible, nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through words and, and deeds, care for others, for the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your daughter grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. We do. Sponsors, do you promise to help nurture Madeline Susan in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of this baptism in communion with the church? If so, answer, we do. We do. People of God, do you promise to support Madeline Susan and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, 
and confess the faith of the church of faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks. O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved. I obviously need to turn this right. Okay. Moved over the waters. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in this water of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Madeline Susan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. I'm going to give this to you, Jessica. There again. Okay. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your new daughter new birth. Cleanse her from sin and raise her to eternal life. Sustain Madeline Susan with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Madeline, Susan, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And if you'd like a candle. Madeline, Susan, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome Madeline Susan Johnson into our family of faith. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. 
Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And if I may so And you may greet your newest sister with applause. Hello. Hi, my name is Kurt Manning. I'm Pastor Mark's youngest son, um, and I'm doing special music today. Um, this one is softly and tenderly. sin in the presence of God and of one another most 
merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first reading for today comes from Exodus, chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. But Moses. but Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seen or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But he said, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will put the words in your mouth and with his mouth. And will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall be shall speak to you to the, for the people. He will serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hand this staff, with which you shall perform the signs. Moses went back to his father-in-law Jethro, Jethro and said to him, Please let me go back to my kindred in Egypt and see whether they are still living. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt. For all those who seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading is also from Exodus. This is Exodus 32, 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? 
As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, and they said These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of this land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Get down at once! Your people, who you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I have commanded them. They have cast themselves an image of a calf. And they have worshipped it and sacrificed to it. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with a great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. In all this land I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Here ends the second reading. You might be confused why we are reading two passages from Exodus. Normally we do one from the Old Testament and then maybe a psalm and then maybe something from the New Testament, maybe an epistle. I chose these two passages from Exodus because they are both about something that has become incredibly important these days, something that is hard to do, something that probably all of us have had to face, and that is changing our mind. There is a lot of stuff to be wrong about these days, and I'll be the first to admit that we as a church have, have tried to do our best in this response to the coronavirus pandemic. We've tried to do our best to make all of this work, and there are times where we have gotten it wrong. And I guarantee any institution you see has made wrong steps at some time during this. It is kind of built into the way that we are. After all, I was just driving yesterday and I got in the left lane and I misjudged how fast I was going. I had my cruise control set to 65. The person in the right probably had their cruise control set to 65. And rather than saying, you know what, I, I misjudged this. I should just get behind this person. What I did is I speeded up to 70 because I thought, I'm in the left lane, dang it, I'm gonna pass him. Even though I really should have, I didn't want to go 70 miles an hour, I was just trying to go 65 miles an hour. I just, I just made a mistake and was too afraid to admit it. We do stuff like that all the time. We make little mistakes, we make major mistakes, and we do not want to admit that we are wrong. We do not want to have our mind changed. This is especially true in this, this first passage that we're reading, where Moses encounters God in the burning bush. I did not read this whole passage to you because it is quite a long passage, but it is quite beautiful. This moment where Moses is fleeing from the Israel, or Moses has fled from Egypt. He is fearful for his life because he killed one of the slave masters. And he says, I do not want to go back there. That country, that nation would kill me if they find out that I went back there, that I am the Moses who killed this man and then hid him in the sand. And he also adds, well, I'm a speech impediment. How am I supposed to be the leader of this great nation? I can't even speak calmly. I can't even have words come smoothly out of my mouth. And God has enough of this. And he says, fine, I will send Aaron, but you are also going. And God changed Moses' mind. You'll see why we get to the, the second reading from Exodus in a minute, but... First, I want to talk about something that I, I actually intended to use in a past sermon, but never actually had the opportunity to use. All right. Any of y'all familiar with Reddit at all? Y'all heard of Reddit? Okay, all right. Good. <laughs> there is a page on Reddit called Change My View, 
And it is the, the best part of the internet. You go and you argue with strangers for hours on end, and you try and change each other's mind. I'm sure many of you have practiced this on your Facebook posts, on your Twitter feeds, maybe on your Instagram posts if you're particularly hot-headed. This is something that many of us have engaged in. Because it is so tempting when you see somebody on the internet to say, I am going to argue with this person and I'm going to beat them down with words until I can convince them that I am right and that they are wrong. Well, when both people come in with that attitude, when both people are utterly convinced that they are right and that the other person is wrong, what ends up happening is no one changes their mind. Rather, people just argue back and forth and relationships are hurt, insults are said, and then both parties just come away angry. This page on Reddit, Change My View, is designed in part to, to have enlightened debate. So the person comes in, they present a viewpoint. Let's say something I said on there is I think bikes are the, the mode of transport for the future and that everyone will be riding bikes in the future. Which is, I, I recognize a viewpoint only that I hold. But I put that on there and then people gave me a lot of reasons why that was not the case. Have you not thought about air conditioning? Have you not thought about the way, like, how cities are getting more and more spread out? Think about all these things, and they changed my mind. I was on that page for a lot more time than I would like to admit. I probably spent at least 15 hours arguing with strangers on the internet, trying to get them to change their mind. And I came ac actually across something that was really effective on that. I would ask the question, and this sounds, this sounds very dumb, so I apologize in advance for how simple this is, I would ask the question, what would change your mind? So often we come in with this mindset that I know what will change that person's mind. If I present facts, or if I present stories, or if I present statistics, that will change their mind. But in reality, we're kind of a fickle people. We all like to have our own pet facts, and our own pet statistics, and our own pet stories that reinforce our own viewpoint. And so what I found, and what I would advise to you if you ever find yourself getting in arguments on the internet, is ask the question, what would change your mind? That's effectively what Moses is saying here in this second reading that I'm about to get to. Is he's asking God, what would change your mind? And that's the same thing that God asked Moses. What would change your mind? Both of those questions, both of those require a, a good deal of humility because you have to recognize the fact that you might not actually change the person's mind. If a person says, nothing will change my mind, well, then you can't change their mind and there's no point in talking about it anymore. If the person provides some sort of fact that is impossible to find, then once again, you're not going to be able to change their mind and here you are just two ships crossing in the night. If you come into the conversation with humility, though, as we see God do, and as we see Moses do, you might actually have your mind changed. In some ways, baptism is one of the greatest signs of humility that we can do as a, as a human being, as a Christian, as a church, as a family. We bring forward an infant knowing that this person cannot do it on their own. This person needs God. Madeline doesn't only need God a just one-on-one -on -one relationship, but also a, a broader church relationship. That we recognize that on our own, we can't make it. We make mistakes. We, get, we have our own foibles. We get proud. We get very proud of ourselves and proud of our point of view and so certain that we are right that nothing will change our mind. It's amazing to me, this, this story, the second story from Exodus, and I wanted to read this story, this is of the, of the Golden Calf, one of my favorite Bible stories. I wanted to read this because it is such an opposite to what happened earlier. In, in the first setting, Moses goes, and Moses is the meek one, and Moses is the humble one, and he says, you know what, I, I am open to having my mind changed, but you're going to have to work really hard, God. And God points out, point by point, all of these things that Moses can do. And all of these things where Moses is wrong. And Moses listens, and he says, okay, fine, I'm going. And then this flips. About 28 chapters later, the people of Israel have created a golden calf. They have created this thing that they are worshiping, that they are saying, this is more important than the Lord our God. As for this Moses, we do not know what became of him. 
So let us worship this, this golden calf. And God wants to kill them. God wants to wipe them off the face of the earth. God wants to let his fury burn hot against them. But Moses speaks to God. And this is, this is an incredible story because I think very rarely do we hear about us speaking back to God. It is always God speaking to us and us meekly listening. But every once in a while in the Bible, we have these stories where someone speaks back to God. And not only does someone speak back to God in this instance, but someone changes God's mind. That requires great humility. Can you imagine creating the whole world, creating all the people that are in it, and then only to have one of those little people say, mm, maybe you should change your mind, God. I don't know if you're right on this one. And actually changing your mind? That's amazing. That's like if one of your great-grandkids, or one of your grandkids, or one of your kids, or a sister, or brother, or whatever, comes to you and says, this thing that you have been thinking your whole life, Maybe you should change your mind about that. And we all know the people that we like to argue with the most are often the people closest to us because we feel like the relationship is so deep we can kind of be mean to each other if we need to be, if we want to be, if we feel like it would serve our point. But very rarely does that actually change our mind. And yet here we have this story of God changing God's mind. It is miraculous, quite honestly. The creator of the known universe listens to a single man. A man who has a speech impediment. A man who ran away from a murder charge. A man who has been given everything by God, only to turn back to God and say, reconsider this one point. We're about to enter a very contentious time in America. Election season. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We are in the middle of, a, of an uplifting of the racial injustice that has been happening in this country for over 400 years. There is a lot of stuff to argue about. There's a lot of stuff to disagree on. My humble, my humble assertion is that we would be happier, that we would be better off if we followed this example of Moses and if we followed this example of God and we're open to changing our minds and changing our hearts. Amen. We sing together hymn number 519, Open Your Ears, O Faithful People. ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, 
Help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, you are great. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth, this earth in which we find so much reward in the cultivation of crops and land in this great area, relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air of all creatures that they need to live, Lord, in your mercy. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all, Lord, in your mercy. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough for outcasts near and far. We pray for those who need your healing, especially our former pastor, Steve Carmine, and his wife, Leah. Steve, recovering from pneumonia and hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant Granite Falls Lutheran Church grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of this late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name, Lord, in your mercy. Hear your word. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them. On the great day of salvation, we especially lift up the family and friends of the late Gorman Velden and our newest sister in Christ, Madeline Susan Johnson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God grant us a heart which is not hardened, a life which, which reaches out to others and hears them, the communion of saints of which this little girl has now joined us in a measure of the Holy Spirit which sends us. Amen. Let's sing together, Morning Has Broken.
Our sending song today is going to be Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Thanks be to God.